Ruby Level Gem. Let me tell you a little bit about it. Now, is that true? You started as a full-time, you were a social worker when you started with Pamper Chef in 05. Social worker. Since that time, she has realized that she could replace her income and stay home with her kids. This year, she's going to be cruising the Mediterranean with her 13-year-old son. Can you imagine that 13-year-old going to the Mediterranean? I have not been to the Mediterranean. But her 13-year-old's going to the Mediterranean cruise. So again, with over uh, with 95 qualified recruits, and I'm sure more on the way. Let's hear from Brenda. Take it away. Well, first of all, I have to say, where's Nicole? That was just up here. Where is she in the room? Stand up. That is why I ask people. Is right there. I would have never known by just seeing her in a show if I should ask her about the business. But I think that is phenomenal, and that is why I will ask everybody. So there, I'm done. That's it. That's all I gotta do. <laughs> no, anyway, but thank you for sharing your story. I really appreciate that. I want to say, too, where I am today is not, I did not get here by myself. Is because other people believed in me, and I really did have my Cambridge family and a lot of great group of friends all over. Not just my people that I live with in Fargo, North Dakota. So, I mean, I think it's phenomenal, all the people and all the team that we are, because I have seen so many people willing to help, including Cindy, who's here today. She's already offered to help me in different ways. I mean, all you have to do is ask, and you will get lots of help. So, first of all, when I first started in 2005, and my, my director's here, Sharon, I said, uh, no, I'm not going to recruit anybody. I just want to sell and make some money and get the products for free, so just I'll call you if I need you. I mean, I think that's pretty much exactly what I said. <laughs> and then a couple months into it, I went to a show, and guess who cut their finger at a show? Has anybody ever done that? <laughs> yeah. It's no big deal, except I had to sit there for an hour waiting for my finger to stop bleeding. <laughs> so, and guess what? The host signed up to become a Pamper Chef consultant. Because <laughs> guess what? I made my job look very easy, did I or did I not, by cutting my finger. So, I mean, that's all I gotta do, then you'll recruit. Just cut your finger. So, anyway, <laughs> so my job is to offer the opportunity to everybody. That changed my life. That voice changed my life, and I still keep in touch with her today. Because I realize that my job is to offer the best opportunity that we have, which is the business. Because I do not know just by looking at somebody who, who may or may not need the business. My second job is to give people the opportunity to get all of our paper chat products for free by hosting a party. You know, and thirdly, but lastly, is my job is to help people buy, buy quality kitchen products for their kitchen to make their job easy and get their families back around the dinner table. That is the social work in me and that is the, that is the way I go into every party. Is I want families to get back around the dinner table because that's where communication happens. So I believe in that. So it's easy for me to get people to book shows because you know what? You need everything. You need to get your families back around the dinner table. So anyway, successful business owner. I feel like I'm a very successful business owner. I feel like my, my career has changed since I started. I was a full-time social worker that did Pamper Chef on the side. Now I'm a successful Pamper Chef business owner. And that is exactly what I tell people when I introduce myself to people. When they say, well, what do you do? Well, I'm a successful business owner. And the reality is, is that this is my job. And I think no matter what, yes, we have a fun job, but if you don't treat this like a job, you won't have a job. You won't have a fun party. I don't care if you want to do one show a month. I don't care if you want to do four shows a month. I have eight shows every month, period, or more. And if you looked on my calendar, there would have been never a month that I didn't have eight shows. Because if I don't have it on my calendar, what do I do? Get them. That is how my, my business has been a success, is being consistent in my business. And treat it like a job. Because you know what? I can fire myself at any time. And that's not what I want to do. So, so the, um, for example, I want to use this example because offering people the business opportunity is part of your job. It's part of your full service checkout. You have to do it or you will eventually fire yourself in this business. And so one way I keep in mind is Target. Bookshop's a Target. Okay, yeah. When you go through the checkout line, what does that target person ask you every time? Say it louder. Okay, and when you say no and you go in there again, what do they ask you? Yeah. Okay, why do they do that? It is their job. And if they didn't do that, what would happen to them? Okay, that's exactly what's going to happen to you if you don't offer this business opportunity. And I can guarantee you, being a top recruiter up here, if you don't ask them, I'll eventually come in contact with them and I'll ask them. I mean, that is, that is the reality. If you do not ask them, somebody else will. How many of you guys have found somebody that you've been in contact with that all of a sudden you found out started selling Pamper Chef? 
Raise your hand. Or another home-based business. Boo, right? <laughs> I mean, really? Okay. So I, the other thing I want to mention is please, please, please do not prejudge anybody. If you, if you never can decide who or who may not need this opportunity. You can't tell just by looking at somebody who lost their husband, who can't pay their mortgage, who has a sick child, who has a home they can't afford. If you could, you'd be one successful recruiter and you'd beat me up here every time. And all you would hear is yeses. And then what? But that's not the reality. I mean, the reality is, it's your job to give the people the information. It's your job to ask the question. It's their job to say yes or no. Right? Okay, so, and when they say no, what happens? Oh, well, I go home walking away with them. I did my job. I asked them the question. And I go, I can say I go home after every show. And I can give myself a pat on the back because I did my job. And I did my job well. Okay, food alone, I don't know if anybody knew this, I think it's an interesting statistic, has got up in price 14% of the last year. Okay, so anybody will tell you that they're probably been a hard, having a hard time getting the food on their table for the family. And so this time more than ever is the time to ask everybody. Because just like I'm a firm believer in our roundup from the heart for the hungry, and that's exactly the way I treat my shows, is I do not know who's having a hard time getting that food on the table. How much is meat? How much is vegetables? How much is fruit? All the things that are healthy for us, right? Expensive. And so I love the meals that we have to provide. $2 per serving or less, under 30 minute meals. How better can you ask for than that? So the first step to be a recruiter is to have a consistent show schedule. I can't stress enough, that is it. And you are not on your own. So if you do not currently have the show schedule, I would say at least four shows on your calendar every month, you do not have enough shows to be a recruiter. You do not have enough shows to continue your business. Your job will be hard. My job is very easy. Those eight shows, give me the eight shows the next month. Those eight shows, give me the eight shows the three months later. Am I I'm running out of time already? No, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> when you start, start walking this way, you made me a little nervous. <laughs> And since 2000, in 2006, when I was a full-time social worker, four shows were on my calendar every week, every month, excuse me. So anyway, first action, and I heard somebody say this earlier already today, which I firmly believe in, you need to ask your hosts. Do you know that I looked at my statistics? Over 80% of the consultants on my team have been what? Hosts. Hosts. Okay. So that is the first step and the most basic step that you can start with. And now I'm going to call out the elephant in the room because I have heard this more than, from more than just one person. Okay, but Brenda, I don't want to ask my host because then they'll lose that show. Is that not correct? Has anybody ever had that time in their career where they really thought about that so that's why they didn't ask them? But Brenda, they're going to expect 25 people. They're going to have like a $1,500 show. I'm not going to ask them to be in the business because then I won't get it. Is that... Are you kidding me? Nobody's ever felt that way? No. <laughs> so, okay, so that's the first thing. You need to have enough shows on your calendar, so you know what? When that host starts, you can say, you know what, you're going to have the show, this is going to be your grand opening show. And you're going to get the sales, and you're going to get the bookings. Because in reality, it's easier for me, after six years in this business, to go out and get more bookings than it is for them to get their initial bookings. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Second action. Just like tying the finger. My job is not hard. <laughs> I do not make my job look hard whatsoever. I don't cook at my, trip, my show. Every one of my customers at that show, they're the ones that do the cooking. I do one recipe, and it's 30 minutes or less, period. Main meal every time, hands down. The other thing is, can, um, she's part of my fellow team, Ann Ball, because she said she was using the bag, the carry less bag. I thought, well, I might as well try it, because I'm kind of sick of carrying all these bags in here. Oh my gosh, it is phenomenal. If you are one person that is still having a nice demonstration and you're putting it there and you're doing all the work at your shows, are you going to get recruit leads? If it takes you an hour to bring your bags in, is somebody going to say, oh, I really want their job? <laughs> Not me. You wouldn't have interested me whatsoever. Secondly, if you're doing all the cooking at your show 
And you're, what is people, what are honestly the average person going to think? That is too hard. I can't stand up in front of that group of people. Is that true? Okay. Again, there's a whole other group of people now that you're not going to get interested. And the main important thing that I can say about you not doing the cooking at your show and doing the interactive show is how the heck do you hear what other people are saying around?